Tide Talk Web is back, baby. Hey, what's going on, guys? Okay. Well, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. We lost the Iron Bowl. It sucks. We kind of knew it was going to happen with all the inju- inju- injuries we had. Most of those linebackers were injured the first year, like Miller and Lewis did play. Uh, they did play well. Uh, we as a whole, offensive, defensive, special teams, everything, didn't play so well at all. Uh, it was kind of, um, you know, in, in that game, we also had uh, Hootie Jones had an MCL injury. Um, I think the thing that, that I took away from it was uh, we still couldn't convert on half of our third downs. We didn't stop them half the time on their third downs. Hell, we'd have them third and eight, and they'd convert. You know, a lot of those slant passes they hit, we didn't, we didn't guard well. Uh, I think because of that, we didn't have an extra defensive back in there because we were bringing a defensive back on a blitz or we had an extra linebacker in for a blitz. Um, that was something I found was crazy. Um, Hertz jacked up and didn't see the play clock on one drive. We could have maybe scored. Wasn't paying attention. Got a delay of gang penalty. Uh, we had three foul-ups on very crucial points on snaps. Uh, one, uh, Bo Scarborough snapped his hands to try to get the the line to uh, align right on their uh, their coverage and also their blocking schemes. And so the center, <clears throat> excuse me, snapped the ball. Uh, one one ball was randomly snapped because they third had the the center thought he heard uh, somebody clap their hands. Uh, I guess in those situations, because of noise, we probably should have went to a leg lift, um, two leg lifts to uh, to signal the snap. Uh, we we did that three times, fouled those up big time. I, I didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, like I said, it, it it was just, I mean, it just got so frustrating on third downs. It was just like we get there close and we couldn't convert. You know, after halftime, we we saw that long drive. They did very well, and then. We couldn't move the ball again. Excuse me. It, it was just painful. It was, seemed like Hertz kind of reverted to his old ways. I felt like we pat we he turned a corner against Mississippi State, and like I said, it just like it, it just we, we went backwards and we couldn't we couldn't do anything. Hats off to Auburn. They did win. They did play well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it out there. I think they don't sneak up on Georgia. They snuck up on Georgia the first time and beat them. I, this could be just because I have a lot of Bama in me. I don't, I don't think I don't think they beat Georgia in the SEC championship. I do not see it. I don't think they do it. We also know Kerryon Johnson is hurt. His shoulders jacked up. Uh, like I said, I think uh, Hamilton uh, reverted him the other way and drove his shoulder to the ground. I think there's issues there. So I think Georgia will win that game. Uh, three Iron Bowl takes that I saw and that also AL.com saw. Um, will it control the ball for 24 minutes of the 60-minute game? Like I said, uh, Dayball, I think he's a good offensive coordinator. I, I've noticed he rotates backs a lot. He tries to get equal carries to all the backs. Uh, like each back got six carries. Uh, at the end of the third quarter, uh, out of the six carries that Damian Harris had, he had 43 yards. That was more than any other back. The only thing I could say there is I kind of wish maybe he would he would run because we got so many talented backs. I get it. You're trying to get all the guys carries. I really wish that he would get the guys that have a hot hand just keep feeding the ball. Just keep feeding the ball. You know, uh, some of it was I think we weren't enough. We were too one dimensional. I don't think that Hertz could get the ball going downfield. You know, guys weren't getting open. He wasn't reading coverages. It was, like I said, it was a lot of things. It was the whole team. Uh, weak pass rush. That was very evident in that game. We could not get a pass rush enough to affect what Stephen was doing, so that really hurt. Uh, I feel like Hurts played it safe, like I said before. I felt like he wasn't throwing in tight windows. He was kind of nervous. Um, only six passes traveled past 10 yards of the whole game. Only six passes traveled past 10 yards. That's got to change for us to win these, these bigger games. Um like I said, I know a lot of people are saying, well, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, if we put Hertz or put Tua in there, you know, he's a gunslinger. Yeah, I get it. He is a gunslinger. But we saw this against inferior teams. We saw this against, you know, Vanderbilt. We saw this at the end of Tennessee. You know, like, we get it. Like, he looks better at passing, but is it just because he's playing inferior competition? Like I said, I think Hertz is the better quarterback right now. It just we got to keep improving his passing. That's all we can do. 
Um, like I said, I do think of that when it comes to the run game, if you got a guy like Harris or a guy like Scarborough or whatever who's hot, keep feeding the ball. You know, I wish that would one thing we'd change. Uh, like I said, he locked in on Ridley most of the game, it seemed like, and only threw uh, – he didn't throw to any other receiver more than more than once. So that was a little concerning. Um, like I said, it, it, it's just a, a myriad of things that, that cause us to lose the game. I get it. We can go into the whole scenarios of, well, you know, Bama's probably going to be, you know, tomorrow I'm sure we'll probably be fifth or sixth. So we'll be sitting right outside the the four for the playoffs. But, you know, we have championship weekend. Um, I think that – excuse me, I'm tired. I think that we'll probably be in the playoffs depending on how things shake out. Now, I'll say if Georgia wins and then Miami wins and then, you know, we have one more team that wins, yeah, I think we stay out of it. Me personally, I'd rather go to the Poinsettia Bowl or the Cotton Bowl, regroup, work on recruiting, work on the areas we need to work on and go for next year. I don't think we're that strong to go to the playoffs. I think teams, I'll just be honest, I think Oklahoma would beat us. I think Clemson right now would beat us. Um, I don't think Miami would. I don't think that, you know, Wisconsin would. Uh, Ohio State could. <sighs> Excuse me. But, like I said, I, I just, I'd rather not go this year. We'll see what happens. We could get it, wind up backing into it by default. But uh, if three of the usual suspects win their conference games, we won't be in it, which I see that happening too. So, we'll see. Big news uh, on the coaching front. You know, we know Ole Miss was looking for a coach. We know Texas A&M was looking for a coach. Florida was looking for a coach. Arkansas fired their coach. He was looking that. And A&M. Uh, we saw Ole Miss went ahead and just uh, punted on second down. They got Matt Luke as the head coach. I don't know if that's going to work out. Texas A&M, now they've been in talks back and forth about, I've seen stories today from reputable people and Bleacher Report and Saturdays Down South that, well, you know, Fisher... He's coming. Well, no, he's not. Well, Florida's going to ante up the money. Well, he's not. We've seen it back and forth, back and forth. Uh, some people I know that my uncle uh, Steve knows, talks to some people that are in the know down at Tallahassee, they say, you know, Fisher's gone. Um, I don't know. I know if from the contract that he has, if it were to go a deal where, um, like his buyout's only $8 million. Like I said, now Fisher just left and walked away. Um, he would owe the school like something like twenty million, thirty million, something like that. Like I said, but his buyout's only like eight. Like I said, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, his buyout's only eight, so for him to go, it wouldn't be that much money. Now, if they just fired him, sorry, if Florida just fired him, Florida State fired him, it would be thirty to forty million dollars. If that ain't gonna happen, they're not gonna fire him. A and M's really pining for a good coach, so I can see it happening. We'll, we'll further details. We don't know what's gonna happen with that. My hunch is he's gone. Florida State, he wants out of there. Um, I think he's gone. We did see Tennessee had tentatively hired Greg Schiano. I thought it was a pretty good hire. Then they backed off because I guess he was uh, a witness in the uh, Sandusky trial. There were some things going on there. There was big out outcry. People didn't want him. It was a huge thing. Uh, they're looking right now to get T. Martin, the offensive coordinator at uh, USC. So that is probably who they're going to hire. Uh, that's still a gamble. You're still taking an offensive coordinator and making him head coach. I know Johnny Major said publicly, you bring Kiffin back, yeah, it's going to look funky, but he wins games. Like I said, Florida, uh, they got spurned, which we all knew they would by Chip Kelly. They got Dan Mullen. Now, I kept saying this the last two years. I said, Dan, if you don't go get a job, well, these guys want to hire you, there's going to be two things that are going to happen. One, nobody's going to come calling for you anymore. Because there's no point. You've been at Ole Miss or Mississippi State for almost 10 years. You did well. You did better with less talent than pretty much anybody could. I think he will be successful at Florida. But if he doesn't win in the first four years, he's gone. We saw that with McElwain. McElwain was a good coach. He had some bad breaks on um, quarterback with Will Greer. We all saw that. If that happens to Mullen, I think Mullen's gone. So he didn't, he, you got to watch it. I think Dan Mullen, I think he knew Mississippi State, he was never going to have a shot at the big big dance. He could never recruit well enough, never compete well enough. He knew this was his one shot to do it, so he left. It's a good thing for him. 
Uh, I see that John Hevesy, his offensive line coach, Billy Gonzalez, his receivers coach, and Todd Grantham, his D coordinator, he has offered them positions, so I see them going to Florida. Arkansas is still up in the air. We don't know what Arkansas is going to do. If I'm Arkansas, I'm going to swing to, for the fences and offer Lane Kiffin $3 million a year and just see what he can do. Give him a five-year contract and just see. Anyway, that's what I have for today. I'll have another video later in the week. I'll have my picks for championship weekend. Let's tune in for that.